What up, what up? It's for your games here with Mr. Ben from the build phase. From the build phase. All right. Uh, yeah, my first game ever of versus system. And uh, I just basically uh, drew a seven card hand and dropped my first location, a.k.a. land for the turn. And then I've got the kingpin character. Kingpin. And I think, does he get experience when a location appears on your side? Yeah, so what Kingpin does is expand the Empire on the build phase. You spend a fist, then you reveal the top five cards of your deck, put a location from among them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom in any order, and then uh, take over the city, level up five. When a location appears on your side, Kingpin gains an XP. So I need to gain an XP. And, uh, yep. And uh, he's a 2-5 with five endurance. What's that thing called? The health? Five health? Yeah, HP, endurance. Okay, yeah, it's how many hits you can take before you lose the game. Okay, so oh, I got these little uh, the regular points out, so let me put in... And XP the out. resource step when you place that location is still part... So phase is kind of like the chapter headings, and then steps are sort of the subdivisions of each phase. So during the resource phase, that's... Or, sorry, during the build phase, the resource step is when you place a location. So after you put that location, if you want to flip that fist tower face down right now to use Kingpin's superpower to essentially scry the top five cards of your deck for another location, you can do that. I thought I have to have five level ups to do that. Well, so his level up requires five locations to appear, but his superpower is that first text, which has the green fist. So you okay. pay a green since Fist Tower oh, okay. allows you to produce any color you want for the Underworld, green is one of them. So you can play, pay that now. Now, you, the location you get off the top of the deck, like if you hit, you won't be able to play that one this turn, but it, at least it'll be in your hand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me do that. And that's part of the build phase. Yeah, yeah That's this is still all build phase. Aha, the build phase. All right. That is absolutely where the name came from. <laughs> the, the build phase. All right. Yeah. Let me go. Well, forward. the tagline used to be "We'll help. We're helping you build a better turn." That that was my slogan. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. So you got to reveal, of course, right? Yeah. Anytime you like get a get a specific type of card, you always got to reveal. Okay. Yeah. Got a. So the last part of the build phase is the formation step. And that's where you decide where your people are. So in Versus, there's a front row, there's a back row, and there's your resource row. So the resource row is non-interactable with your, your characters for the most part. But front and back row, as more characters come out to the board, it will make a difference. When each of us only have one character, it's not such a big deal. But this would be the part of the turn where you could decide if you want Kingpin up front or Kingpin in the back. If you have a one cost, I, I skipped a step actually. I'm sorry. There's the recruit step. If you have a one cost character in hand, this would be the time when you could recruit them prior to forming. But if you don't have anybody who costs one, then you can't play anybody this turn because you only have one mana, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, this video is going to be stupid crap. But, um, all right. Yeah, it might so, need some editing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, um, I got no one drop, so I, so I guess I'll pass turn. Okay, well, before you could, so my main character is a 4-3 uh, in terms of stats. So if you're Kingpin, because he doesn't have range, right? Nope. So he can only attack from the front row. You have to have range to be able to attack from the back row. So if you form with him up front and you can get up to 3, you could potentially stun me this turn if you wanted to. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so to call my main character, what do I do? To, like, attack with him? Yes. So that's, you tap him. It's called exhaust in this game, but in magic terms, you tap him and, and you just declare, hey. Uh, so the big thing about versus that I like way more than magic is attackers have initiative. So you get to pick who you punch as opposed to say, oh, I'm just attacking and then I get a block with whoever. So if you want to send Kingpin and Spider-Man, you just turn him sideways and say, Kingpin's attacking Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, so swing in with Kingpin, and he's automatically in the front row, right? 
I mean, you have the choice of putting him in the front or back, but I mean, if you want to attack with him, there'd be no reason to put him in your back. Okay, put uh, Kingpin in the front and then swing in for two on Spider Man. Well, I'm a three, so unless you have an effect to increase his attack, you're not going to be able to clip me. Okay, so why would we need a plot twist? A plot twist or a power up? Um, okay, um. Okay, so I could have, I would have needed to set this plot twist before. No, uh, so you can't play plot twist from your resource row in this version of Versus. Okay. In the original iteration of Versus, you could put plot twists face down in your row and turn them face up to play them. That entire mechanic is gone in the new, in Versus 2 PCG. So you can only play plot twists from hand. Okay, they're just all instants, okay. Essentially, yeah, they, eh, sort of. Okay. So one thing about timing in Versus is there's no chain. There's no I play a card, then you play a card, then I play. There's none of that. So when you play a card, it fully resolves before any other player can do anything. Most of the time. There's a very tiny number of effects called reaction powers that act the way instants do in Magic, but that's like a corner case. So if you wanted to play a plot twist uh, during the combat, you just say, hey, I'm going to play this plot twist. You get to play it, then I have a chance to do something. If it, if I pass, then it's back to you. You can play something else, or you can pass. And if at any point we both pass, then that resolves the combat, and at that point we strike each other. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll go ahead and play this Pain and Suffering. Choose a character to get minus zero, minus two. Okay. So that'll reduce my defense by two. So now I'm only a one. And your two is going to be big enough to stun me. And what's Kingpin's defense? Uh, he's a two five. A two five. So my four is not sufficient to stun you back. Now, my experience condition is when any number of enemy characters attack, I gain that much XP. So since you attacked me, I get to gain an experience. Uh, and since you're big enough to hit me, I'm also going to gain a wound here. I can find an experience token. So once I'm stunned, it, it goes back to essentially being your main phase, and you could do additional things with no characters on your side, no characters on my side. I'm assuming you're probably done. Uh, yeah. I'll pass turn. Okay, so the first thing I do on my turn is I recover, turn all my people face up, I draw my two cards... And then I am going to. The video quality is place... better on Discord, though, right? Uh, that I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, I I have a paid boost on the my Discord server, so it's like marginally better. But I mean, this looks fine. I can see what you're doing. So. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna play a green resource. Uh, and then I'm going to recruit a one-cost character, Prowler. He is a 2-1-1 one, one with range, and when he comes into play, I get a draw card. Hey, uh, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to put Prowler in front of Spider-Man. So if you want to get to my back row, you either got to get Prowler out of the way, or you have to have a character who can fly, and then they can fly over and hit my back row. Yep. And then I'm going to pass, because I have no attacks that can get through your five defense that won't get me stunned back. Okay. So tell me the phases again, just draw phase, build phase. So you've got your recovery, it, which is when your character is going to unexhaust, then you yep. draw, and then you're going to enter the build phase. And the build phase is broken down into three steps. The first step is the resource step when you get to lay resources. Then you have the recruit step, which at the start of that, you count up the number of resources you have, and that's how many recruit points you have. So for this turn, it'll be two. Uh, and then after you recruit characters, then you have formation where you get to decide what rows they're in, essentially. There is no columns in this, so like it doesn't actually matter that these characters are like this or if they're like that. Okay. It's only front row, back row. There were columns in old verses, but that's just not the case in the new game. Okay. So any guy in the front 
can block for any guy in the back. Unless you have a flyer. So if the character you're attacking with has the, I don't have any, the it, but there's the like a little wing symbol that appears kind of in this part of the card. Yeah. If they have that, they can fly over the front row and hit the back row. Okay, so hit anybody in the back row. Okay. But if they don't have wings, then they have to deal with the. It, the exception to that is if I have a character in my front row who has flight, you can't fly over them. You have to deal with the flyer first. Okay. All right, let's go with uh yeah, I'll play Rhino two drop. And then Okay. Then I'll go. And then everybody has summoning sickness, right? No. Nope. That's not a thing in this game. Everybody can go the turn they hit the board, which I love. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, well, if he doesn't have range, and range is this symbol right here. Oh, yeah. That means it, without that symbol, they cannot attack from the back row. So if you want to be able to attack with both your dudes, you've got to put them both in the front row this turn. Okay, so I can summon them right to the front row. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, Yeah, let me go ahead. Yeah, let me put that closer to, to towards the front. All right. Um, And then Kingpin, he's kind of stuck in the front row. I, uh, what would I have no, to do to bring him to the back row? Every time you have a formation step, you can move him. So if you want to tuck him in the back and hide him to protect him so I can't hit him, you can do that now. But okay. the only time you're going to move people around during regular game rules is the formation step. So if nobody's stuck in the front row. I, there's a key word that makes it so people can't move. But setting aside the corner cases, every turn you're going to move all your people wherever you want. Cool. Probably a freeze or whatever it is. Or, so something. I don't know. Uh, freeze makes it so somebody doesn't ready during okay. their recovery. All right. Uh, yeah, let's swing on. So <laughs> Prowler's only a 2-1, and my main character is a 4-3. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's swing with Kingpin on Prowler. Okay. You are going to stun him, and I'm not big enough to stun you back. Spider-Man will gain a plus one experience because he gets experience anytime anybody on your side of the board attacks. Okay. Um, oh, damn it. I forgot to put another experience counter on. Oh, yeah. You, you should have a second experience. Okay. Um, yep. And then I'll go... Okay, so Rhino's in the front row and Spider-Man's in the back row. He can still attack him. Now he's unprotected. Now he's unprotected. Uh, all right. If you think of the back row, once there's nobody in the front row, the back row kind of the becomes front the front row. You know what I mean? <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right, yeah. Uh, uh, and what's his stats? Uh, 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 Reynolds a 5-3. All right, so in this case, we're going to stun each other. Okay. So I'll gain an experience off you declaring the attack, and then I will take a second wound. Okay, and Spider-Man can sustain five wounds. He has five health, yeah. Okay. Uh, how much health did Rhino have? Uh, three. So he's good. Three, two, oh, one. oh, oh God, one, three. one. No, 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 one. Oh, one. one. Okay. Nah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, there's I mean, no did. way. <laughs> no way, no way, no way. Rhino's this. And that's something to think about with, uh, with characters in this game is a lot of them, if they have multiple health, they're so much stickier. It's almost like getting to recruit them for free again the next turn to put it in kind of like magic terms. So that extra health point is like really valuable. Okay. Oh, yeah. I assume you're done after that since you got no other characters. Oh, crap. I'm kind of forgetting about my instance and all that crap. Um, and Spider-Man was a... Oh, well, did you have something you wanted to play? Oh, yeah. He's a 4-3. Uh, okay, Spider-Man's a 4-3, so... Uh, yeah, you know, while I'm at it, let me go ahead and let me, uh, redo that, my bad. Uh, uh let me do fair and balanced, so I'll give a guy, I'll give Rhino plus one, plus one, give Spider-Man minus one, minus one for the turn. So, the way that works, uh, is, see how it says main in bold at the very beginning of the text? Oh, uh, yeah. So if you think about okay, the main so that's phase, not during the combat. Okay, so I would have had yes. to do that before. 
which, I form. Which you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, I'm, okay. I, I'm only pointing it out because I'm trying to teach, but I'm not okay. going to, like, punish you. So if you ready right now and you say, hey, I'm going to play fair and balanced, oh, yeah. My, oh, okay. I would get a minus one. And Rhino would get a plus one, and then you would declare the combat. Okay, yeah, my bad. Okay, yeah. So going no uh, six four into a Spider Man three, and I'm only two. a three two. So you're gonna smoke me here. So I get. So it ends up in the same place. The difference is your Rhino doesn't get stunned, and he's a little bit bigger too. Cool. No, that plus one stays on. Oh, it stays on. Okay. But, so there are some plot twists that'll say give a character. Plus three for the turn or for the combat, those do not stay. That plot twist in particular gives you a plus one plus one counter, which does stay. Great. So that's way better. It's like a permanent stat. Well, if he gets stunned, he'll lose it, but it, it's a more durable stat boost than like just a plot twist would be or a, a sorcery. Crazy. All right. Uh, yep. And then that's all I want to do. All I can do. All right. So I ready up. I draw my two. And I'm going to start to get annoying this turn. All right. I'm going to play Wasp. Now, her deal is she has a keyword. So she has flight for one. Flight, yep, yep, yep. Uh, so she you're not going to be able to go over at the top of her. Yep. And her pa- she's a 1-5, and her power is whenever she's attacked, I can cancel the combat if it's the first time she's been attacked this turn. Nice. So you declare an attack into her, and I say, oh, I'm going to shrink, and the combat's over. Nobody strikes. It's just over. Nice. So I'm going to put her up in front because I need my Spider-Man to drink up all this experience from you having to attack me. I'm going to leave him in back. Uh, I can't deal with either of your characters, so I'm going to pass. Cool. All right. uh, Ready phase, which is called what? Uh, Recovery. Okay, recovery. recovery And you draw. Draw phase. Oh, dude, have you only been drawn one card? You draw two cards a turn in versus. That's what I was thinking, yeah. I was about to ask that, but I didn't. Yeah, my bad. Uh, I thought it was like that. If we were in person, I would have caught that immediately. Have you you only drawn one card each turn? Yeah, I just drew two that time. I think that catches me up because first player draws one, right? First player draws zero on turn one. Yeah, did I draw one the first turn? I don't remember. It's okay. We'll just keep going forward. (laughs) It's all good. Okay. All right. Um. All right. Uh. Build phase. You can. Um. Is it a game where you gotta drop your land the first thing or what? Yeah. So the order of your build is you get your resource step first, yeah. which is like playing your land. Oh yeah. That'll cause kingpin to gain an XP. Oh yeah. All right. Go to the three side. Then when you enter the recruit step. It checks how many resources you have, which in this case is three. So you have three recruit points that you can use to recruit a one cost and a two. You can do a three drop, any combination to get up to three. And then after this step, those recruit points are gone forever. Like there's no carryover of recruit points. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and. Play Mary Walker, which is okay. Mary Jane, right? But no Peter Parker, though, right? No, she's she's different than Mary Jane. She's actually like a bad guy. She's like alternate universe Mary Jane. Uh that I don't know. That that, that could be the case. Hmm. Got to look her up because she looks like Mary Jane. Ready? I know. Mm. All right, she calls two, so. If that's true, I learned something today. Now, also remember, Kingpin's power is only good in the build phase. So if you want to use his power this turn, uh, you want to do that before you get through your recruit. Okay. And that involves turning that green location face down. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I'm going to use the build. Um, the the expand the empire, reveal the top five cards of your day, put a location from among them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom. Three, four, five. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and get Fist Tower. The, nice. The quintuple land, and uh, put that in hand. Rest on the bottom. And then the last 
part of your build is going to be your formation, where you get to decide if you want to put your characters in the front or back row. Okay. Which, uh, at this juncture, you probably want them all in front. Yeah, so I can kind of get through Wasp, maybe. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's going to take two attacks to get through Wasp. Okay. Um. Mm, yeah, let's swing with... Uh... Yeah, let's swing with Kingpin for two. Okay. Two, five. So the only available targets by Wasp, yep. and I'm going to use her shrink power to cancel that attack. Okay. But Spider-Man will get his experience from the attack being declared. Okay. Spider-Man levels up at level five experience? Five. five. So I need one more, and then I'm going to level up to nine, six. Crazy. Okay. Um... Then I'll swing with. Hey, uh, brush your teeth, bud. Swing with Rhino. Yeah, I know he's big enough. Five three, yep. Right. Uh, and that will give me my fifth experience. So Spider Man's oh, gonna look oh. up. Oh my bad, my bad. Uh, Rhino must. Rhino has angry, and Rhino must be my first attack each turn. Oh, I forgot about that part of that card. Uh, yeah, so I guess of course you're gonna block the Rhino. You're gonna shrink the Rhino. So yeah, I, guess I'll go. I mean you have to attack with him, so I'll shrink him. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so in that case, I'll that go. may even impact how you want to form. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question thing. Um, yeah, I'll go instead of Kingpin. Can't go Kingpin. I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, screw it. Uh, yeah, I'll just go Mary Walker, and then into Walker. What are her stats? Uh, four four. Four four. Uh, do you have something to get up to my five? Because Wasp is a one five. Uh, does the does the damage stay on there for the rest of the turn? Or no, no, oh, it's it only for like each it. combat. Well, and actually, at the moment, she doesn't have any damage because remember, you attack with Rhino, and uh -huh. then I cancel the combat by shrinking. Okay, I guess I got to form. Um, These are evil characters, or what are they? Is that symbol evil? Uh, the the like the dude with the fedora. Yeah. That's a, that's a team affiliation. That means that they are underworld affiliated. Okay, so underworld, they could underworld. team attack. So if you yeah. wanted to have Kingpin and Mary Walker attack together, uh -huh. you then add their attack values, and if that gets you to the five, you'll be able to stun Wasp. Yeah, all team attack is what I'll do. Okay, so you'll still get her because I can't. My one attack, my is <laughs> not going to hurt you guys. Uh, that will cause Spider Man to level up though. Cool. So his superpower, once he gets to level two, is if I'm in combat, I can pay a red and strike the enemy main character for his full nine before the end of combat. So it's kind of like an artificial first strike, so okay. to speak. Like, uh, So if I attack in, I've yeah, got nine, and I'm in the red, then I hit you before you can hit me back. So oh, it yeah. works basically like first strike does in magic. Oh, yeah. I can pay a green to do that to supporting characters, but you haven't really given me the opportunity. <laughs> gotcha. All set after that? Cool. Yep, yep, yep. All, All right. right. Draw my two. I'm going to play a resource. I'm going to... You keep your XP after you're knocked out, though, right? Wounded. Oh, yeah. XP, technically, the experience goes on the level two, so it's not even in play. Okay. Uh, so you can't lose experience by being getting stunned. Uh, plus one and minus one counters go away when you get stunned. Wounds are created by being stunned, uh, but XP can't be taken like that. Okay. All right. I'm going to recruit Prowler. His coming into playability lets me draw a card. I'm going to recruit another prowler 
which because of uniqueness, you can't control characters with the same name. That's going to actually KO the original Prowler. And the second Prowler lets me draw a card. And with my third experience or my third recruit point, I'm going to recruit a Falcon. So his deal is he can't be struck by anybody who has flight, which doesn't affect your board at all because none of your people can fly. <laughs> no, we have a flight. All right, so uh, I'll go with my recover phase. Oh, 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 uh, you're well, swinging, though. You're swinging. You're first, swinging. You're swinging. Now you're swinging. I'm big enough to put a wound on Kingpin. Gotcha. So Spider Man is going to attack for 9 6 into Kingpin. Oh, yeah. Uh, nothing I can do about that, I don't think. Um, and then when you're stunned, you can't ready for the next turn? No, you, uh, the recovery, you flip over and ready. It just, basically, it'll turn you face down and you take a wound. And if you get five wounds, you lose the game. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and take the, take the hit. Alright. Uh, what's Mary Walker's stats? Uh, 4-4. Four, 4-4? Four. Four, four. <sighs> Probably should have formed differently. Oh, well, I mean, you, right. can, you can take it back, man. Oh, no, here's what I'll do. Actually, I'll, uh, we'll do this. I'm going to attack with Falcon into Mary Walker. Okay. And I'm going to discard a copy of a character with the same name from hand, which is the mechanic we talked about over text called Powering Up. Yeah. So that will put a plus one, plus one onto Falcon, and that makes him a 4-3. Okay. I'll go... Shock to the system. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that gives him... Uh, minus three, minus zero. Yeah. So my attack goes down to small enough that I can't stun you, but your attack is still big enough to stun me back. So my falcon just dies. I, I just fed him into a value trade. Value trade. Uh, at that point, I will pass turn. I'm going to step away for one second, though, because it's my kid's bedtime. Cool. One cool. moment. Well, turns out he didn't brush his teeth when he was supposed to, so we're going to play another turn, and then I'm going to put him to bed. <laughs> Sounds good. And that's Whitman, huh? Yep. Okay. Not brushing his teeth. These crazy kids. Who you may know from some of our videos. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, start of your turn, you get to ready all your stuff. Oh, okay, you're not swinging with Prowler. Okay, because... Nah, he's only a 2-1, I can't do anything with him. Ah, okay. I'm not big enough. No kind of plot twist, no nothing? Nothing that's going to be relevant. <laughs> okay. 
All right, I'll go ahead and ready. Draw two. Drop a location. Get an XP. And an XP. Puts me at four, almost five. And uh, I'll do the expand the empire on build phase. Spend a fist. There's only five resource types in the game, or no, no. There's a lot more because it's faction so based too. Four there's in the faction. Actually, six total, okay. but most of the time it's red, yellow, green, and blue. The other two are space and earth, but they don't see a lot of play. And they of were course, introduced the, and of course, the faction, the team affiliation, right? Yeah. So the wild locations each produce four colors for whatever their team is. Um, most of the time it's red, blue, green, and yellow. For some specific teams like the Aliens team, I don't remember which color they're missing. I think it's yellow. I, so theirs produce space, green, blue, and red. Something like that. Okay. Yep, I crapped out on that one. No land. I should have added more land. More locations. Oh, no. Right. Uh... And then you get to drop up to four costs worth of characters. Four costs. Yeah, let me drop a different Mary Walker. While Mary is defending each attacker with the minus one, minus one can't strike her. Oh, I can only have one of her. So, yeah, if you play that yeah. second copy of Mary, that will KO the one you have. Yeah, that will be stupid. But if I remember correctly, that character gets benefits based on other copies of Mary Walker in the KO pile. Exactly. So a way you could get that card into the KO pile is you could do that power-up thing. Once you get to your main phase, you could discard the one that's in your hand. That puts a plus one, plus one on the Mary Walker that's in play, plus she gets whatever the power is. Okay. I think that's how those cards work. It's yeah. been a while since I've played with Mary. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's see. You know, uh, Spidey's a 9-6 and Prowler's he a 9-6. He's a 9-6 and I can pay a green to have first strike against supporting characters or a red to have first strike against main characters. And I'm showing both colors of locations at this time. So you got to be careful how you declare your attacks. Okay, so, so even if you're not attacking, you still get the first strike. Essentially, yeah. Okay. At the time that I pay it, I punch you right then. Okay. So it's it's not quite the same as first strike, but yeah. it's the same kind of idea. So like if you declared a team attack into me, I could maybe I could punch one of those characters out of the team attack, but maybe the other one could get through and, and hit me for the six. Okay. But you determine who be, you wanna but you determine who you wanna hit first, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll get it like if you send Mary and Kingpin, I can shoot. Well, the difference is I have to pay a red to hit a main character with my superpower and a green to hit a supporting character. Now I've got two wilds, so I can pay either cost, but it, it, if there's a point where I'm not showing any green locations, then you can kind of attack me with a little bit more confidence. Okay. With supporting characters or whatever. Assuming I don't have, you can also th discard locations from your hand to pay for superpowers. It's obviously much better to put them in the row because then they keep producing value for you in terms of recruit points. But that is an option. So you always have to be aware, like somebody might be able to activate a superpower from hand. Okay. All right. Uh, nine, six. Uh... Okay. Team attacking. Okay. Uh, four, six. Yeah, I'll swing with the. Oh, um, I've got a wound on King. No, I never got a wound on Kingpin yet. You have uh, one wound because I punched him last turn. Did I kind of negate it or something or? Uh, no, I, I got him last turn with Spider-Man. Okay. You did uh, bounce my attack with Falcon into Mary Walker, though. Okay, okay. Put that wound on him. All right. Um, 
yeah, I guess it's best to swing with the whole team, I guess, on Spidey. All right. That is a big attack. So Mary Walker's a five. Rhino's a six. Kim Mary's a four. Great. Mary's big. a four. Rhino's a oh, six. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Kingpin's a two, five. You shocked her. You didn't power up. That's how you got out of my attack. That's what it was. Mm. Uh, okay, well, I am going to pay the red to be able to just punch Kingpin and stun him right now. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and take my third wound. Great. So. And I'll... So, I'm paying the red to hit Kingpin. Then we're going to let the combat resolve with Mary and Rhino coming into Spider-Man. So, I still get a strike back at the end of combat for, like, regular end of combat effects outside of my superpower. So, I'm going to clip Mary and get her out of there as well, unless you got something. Uh, nine. I'm a nine-six. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. Okay. So, I take my third wound... And I imagine you're probably done at that point, yeah? Uh, man, did I spend... Oh, yeah, I didn't spend anything. Um, oh, wait, did you not recruit this turn? Yeah, uh, I couldn't because of the Mary. I could have. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So now, after combat, there's no main phase two or, or anything, is there? Nope, those recruit points are gone once you enter your main phase. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll pass turn. All right. I am going to place a fourth resource, and I'm going to recruit Wasp, which is super lame. Let's see. You ready for bad wit? Oh, well, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh. God, you brush your teeth. I'm going to wait to bed. I'll be right back then. Right. What's he doing with, uh, with Spidey? Uh, I'm going to attack and then use his amazing superpower that lets him uh, strike a supporting character in the combat. I'm attacking Rhino. Okay. So okay. I'm going to strike Rhino before he gets the chance to strike me back and just get him out of there. Cool. Uh... And I'm going to pass to you. Unless you got something in that combat to try to stop me. Alright, I'll go play dead. Oh, sure. Guy. Yeah, that'll do yeah. it. So stun a guy, but he doesn't take a wound, though. He will lose his plus one counter because he's getting stunned, but you're right that he won't take a wound. Oh, that kind of blows. But... Yeah, but I better yeah, do it, though. Well, anytime a character goes face down, they lose all equipment plus and minus one counters. Okay, cool. All right, that works for me. And you're up. Cool. All right, recover. No whimmies. All right, no whimmies. Ooh. All right, drop this fifth location, and then I'll grab in XP, which is enough to level up. So you become gold? Become the gold guy. 
And then uh, how often are there level threes? Not very often. Uh, but Kingpin actually does have a level three version. It just doesn't appear in the Defenders box. It came out in Marvel Legacy. Okay, what year was that one? Uh, 2018, 17? So the game originally came out in 15. Defenders came out in spring of 16. So Legacy would have been spring of 17, 2017. Okay. So, like, it's pretty much mandatory. You got to go and seek out the level three, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a better, it's better. It's quite a bit better. So, the, the way the level two and three work in Legacy is it actually replaces that version of Kingpin with a different level two uh, that gives him an experience condition to get to level three. Uh, they gave that treatment to... Every, uh, one main character for all the teams out of the A-Force, Defenders, and base set boxes. So they have like alternate level twos, essentially. And yeah, most of them are better than the originals. Okay. Do people often run seven drops or no? Uh, it kind of depends on the deck. Like really aggro, heavy aggro decks, I will probably peak out at four or five, maybe six, depending upon the deck. Not every deck is going to want a 7-drop, and even decks that do want 7-drops, you're probably running somewhere between 2 and 4 at oh. most. And it would only be 4 if it's like a really, really important 7-drop for, for like your combo or whatever. Okay, yeah, because it's clogging up my hand right now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Uh, drop this other Mary, who has the power of, can you reorder your discard pile? Yeah. Yeah, that's discard pile doesn't have any kind of uh, order to it. It's public information. You can a lot of times when I'm playing, I'll actually kind of stagger mine out like, oh well, that glare is horrendous, but I'll kind of stagger mine out like that so I can look at it at a glance and not have to like pick it up and fumble through it. Okay. Yeah, it sucks because composite Mary. I should have dropped her last, but but the cards are uh, like this. It's a learning game, yeah. man. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, one three, drop a carnage right in front, I guess. Yeah, sure. Drop a carnage right in front, uh, and then drop a. Yeah, that's all I got is a freaking carnage. All right, uh, who's a good ramper in the game? A good what? Ramper. Oh, uh, so there's. Very limited ramp, but probably the best ramp card is the Mantis 2-drop that came out in base set, uh, where when she gets KO'd, she goes into your resource row. Uh, okay. Two of the... I think there's only four ramp cards. No. So there's Nick Fury and Mantis in the base box. Then later we got Mirage. What team is then, Mirage? Mirage is an X-Men. Okay. And, and then there was a course bishop Guardian. that came out last summer. And, uh, and like then Air there's Force. a seven drop that lets you ramp a location that came out in the Predator set. Okay. And I th think that's all the ramp of the game. Yeah, well, I definitely want a little ramp. And, uh, yeah, there's there's not much. Okay. Uh, but Mantis is, in my opinion, the best one. Because she's the easiest. Uh, like Nick Fury, you have to pay a yellow to use him. Mantis just kind of happens. Guardians, right? Yeah, she's a Guardians 2 drop. Okay. All right, let me see what this Kingpin of Crime does. Main, spend one of the four main symbols, put a plus one, plus one on a character. You may use this power any number of times on your turn. I pretty much have no other use for these for a while, so I'll just go ahead and... Oh, but, but if the guy dies... Then they go away, yeah. Okay. Main phase is before the combat, yeah. So every time, once you get done with all your build phase actions, you enter the main phase, and then the combat is always a combat step within the main phase. So you're in the main phase, you go into combat, you go back into the main phase. Okay. As many times as you have attacks to declare. Okay. Okay, Rhino's got to be the first attack, so I can team attack, though. Five... And I don't have to hit Wasp, but... 
you don't have to hit her, but the first time you send somebody at her, she can shrink. Yeah. All right, one second. All right, you going to bed? Uh, All right, you going to bed? Yeah, I guess I want to be ready for the bed. All right, all right, one minute. Wait. Um, let me see. Okay, gotta send Rhino first. So five. Mary is defending. It's attacker. Nice one, nice one. And I can send him right at Spidey, though, right? You sure can. There's no blocking or anything, right? No, because Spider-Man's up in the front row now. I had to put him in front in order to attack with him, so now he's vulnerable for your counterattack. So only main characters can block? No. At any So none of your characters can attack Prowler. Yeah. Because he's in the back row. So any of these characters can block at anything that's in the back row. But, because Spider-Man didn't have range, if I wanted to protect him, I could have kept him back here, but then I couldn't have attacked with him. Okay. So, in order for me to attack with him, I had to put him up front, and that leaves him vulnerable for your counterattack. Okay. Yeah, but this front row can't block for front row. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the front row characters don't block each other. They only block the back row. Okay. So, so I... anytime you hear the term a protected character, that always means a character in the back row with at least one character in the front row in front of them. Okay. And so, that's what protects them. All right, so um, in Spidey can still do that first strike thing, even when... I do have that first strike. I'm showing a, a red and a wild card location. Okay, man. I'm going to grab another beer. I'll be right back. All right, cool. Now you can only counterattack with with Spidey on one guy, right? Yeah. Well, so the way combat works is all the characters in the combat strike each other at the same time at the end. So under regular combat rules, I can only hit like if you would team attack with three guys, I can only hit one back. Yeah. Now Spider Man's superpower, I have the ability to kind of cheat that a little bit because I can pay a resource to punch one of your guys and then at the end of combat I still get my regular like game mechanic end of combat strike so I could potentially hit two guys with Spider-Man oh man uh let's see yeah I'll go ahead and swing with the team so it's one three uh 13 and Spidey okay I am gonna go ahead and pay a red to hit Kingpin to get a wound on him and then I'll eat the rest of it Actually, how big is Kingpin? Can I hit him? I'm five, sure I can. I'm a nine attack. Five seven, yeah. Uh. Now, if you have three, so in verses you can't respond. Uh, like once I declare my superpower, it happens, and there's no answer to it. But if you have one more location in your hand before you pass the turn to me to give me a chance to do anything in the combat. You could spend your two existing resources and discard one from hand, and that would get Kingpin's defense big enough that Spider-Man can't hit him. That's before you declare Spider-Man. And then, yeah, you would have to do that before you attack me, because you can't. I can't say, hey, I'm going to use my superpower, and then you go, oh, I'm going to dump all this stuff and make it so you wasted it. That's just not how timing works in this game. So I can't so you have to, twist. Right you right. have to look at it and go, okay, that's a nine attack. I have to get my defense up to a 10 so Spider-Man can't hit me. And you have to, before you declare the attack, put that into place, essentially. But uh, but I couldn't even plot twist after you declare what Spider-Man is doing? It, it would resolve before you would... The, so, again, everything happened. There's no chain. Okay, so, no chain. you declare the attack, and you have a chance to play a plot twist before anything else happens. Oh, okay. But if you pass it to me and give me a chance to do something, when I do my thing, it resolves and it's over before it goes back to you to do something. 
So something else you could do if you've got like shock to the system in your hand is you could declare that attack and then play shock to the system before I get a chance to do anything. And that reduces my attack down to a six, in which case I'm not big enough to hit Kingpin. Yeah. So that would be another way you could get out of it. I mean, I'll just take a wound of me. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, three wounds. And I'm going to go up to four. Uh, since I hit Kingpin with my superpower, I do get my end of combat, my actual stun. So I'm going to hit Rhino, finally. Um, I think. And, okay, so you declare that, then it bounces to me, then I can play plot twist and such. Well, so I use my superpower. Now you have a chance to play stuff. Okay, cool. When it gets, and if you pass, uh, and I pass, then we go to the part where we resolve striking. And so once it gets to the point where combat is ending, there's there's not a chance to play any more plot twists then. So if you want to try to protect, again, you have to think about it, Magic the Gathering trains everybody to try to push every action to the last possible second. And in Versus, this is a game that rewards you and incentivizes you to be a little more proactive and do things ahead of time rather than wait till the last second, which is a big change between the two games. Oh, like, yeah. you're coming from a Magic background, that's gonna, it's going to feel a little mind-bendy to have to start like, oh no, I have to do it first instead of waiting, but that's just kind of the difference between how the games play. Cool. And old versus was different, though, right? Old versus was totally different. It had a chain system, just like Magic the Gathering had a stack. Uh, Plot Twist had threshold costs. Um, it was a very different game. Okay. Which did you two say that you preferred? <laughs> um, old versus is maybe my all-time favorite game. Maybe I don't know. Uh, when New Versus came out, I was kind of hostile to it because of how much I loved the original game. But over the years, this one has really grown on me. Uh, since this game still exists and I still get new cards for it, this is probably my favorite compared to the two. But that's, it's like almost trying to choose between your two kids. Like The old Versus system and Versus 2 PCG are easily my two favorite games ever. So it's, it's hard to decide which one I like more. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. I guess like Lord of... I guess Legend of the Five Ring people are probably the same way. But, uh... And Netrunner people. All right, but yeah. um, Yeah, I guess I'm tapped out. Okay. Uh, well, if the combat's going to resolve, I take my wound, I killed your rhino, yep. and I'll draw up. Poor... All right, I'm going to play a fifth resource, which is a blue. And I'm going to play... I see those are UFS leaves, right? You play in a UFS? Uh, I just like Street Fighter okay, fighting okay. game. Gotcha. <laughs> you ever play I, uh, I have some UFS cards, but I have not actually ever played a game. I got the My Hero Academia. Uh, set my my local game store guy actually gave it to me and was like, "Here, make some videos with these cards." And I, dude, it's I've never learned how to play that game. <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah, I used to have a Thursday UFS group like before before the uh, pandemic, but oh yeah, well that killed a lot of gaming groups. The oh, pandemic yeah. did. Oh yeah. All right, so good. I recruited Luke Cage. He is a 4-8, and notably, I think this is the first supporting character we've seen that has two health. Oh, so nice. when he gets stunned, he doesn't die right away. He sticks around. And his power is that when he's attacking a main character, he strikes with double his attack. So he's a 4-8, unless he attacks Kingpin, and then he's an 8-8, basically. Nice. Uh, I'm going to have Luke Cage punch Carnage. Yeah, and then I can do about that. Oh, Carnage should have got a plus one counter. Oh, because he was stuns, part of that attack. He was part yeah. of the team attack that stuns Spider-Man. Yeah, and he keeps him, too. Cool. And he's going to get another plus one counter when Luke Cage stuns him. Okay. Carnage can have, uh, when Carnage stuns an enemy or gets stunned, you get a plus one, plus mm -hmm. one. Okay. So, all right. So, he's stunned. Now, Carnage is a 3-3 three, three that can retain his plus one. And plus he one gets counter. one wound, but he has oh, yeah. two health, so he doesn't die. Yo. Right. Uh, let's see. Wait, what's the Mary Walker that you have out? What's her stats? 
Uh, she's a two four. When she's defending, each attacker with the minus one minus one can't strike her. It doesn't matter. I can't get the four. Uh, so I'll pass. Go ahead. Okay. Ready. 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 I didn't think to point this out before, but because of Carnage's symbiosis, he might be a good target for some of those plus one counters that Kingpin can generate with his superpower. Oh, yeah. Yeah, didn't even think about that. Because they're a little bit that. stickier. Oh, yeah, didn't even think about that. Should have did that before I let him get stunned, but all right, let's draw two. I, Remember that? If I was making. being a better teacher, I would have pointed it out before that owl happened, but. <laughs> oh, no, I should have been paying attention. I should have been a better student. Uh, man. Yeah, you need a bunch of lands in this deck. I see that now. So, like, what's the meta right now? So, the way the game works is there are feature formats that come out four times a year. And the current featured format is called Life Goes On. And it requires you to play a main character that has six or more health on all their levels. And you can only play supporting characters that have two or more health. They A while ago, they did one called Life's Too Short, which was only five health main characters and only one health supporting characters. So they're kind of riffing on that. So it, coming from a magic background, you're probably used to rotation where it's kind of based on the calendar. Like magic is the last two years of sets is what's legal. That's the format. Versus will do stuff where they say, okay, so for this format, uh, these five team affiliations are what you can play. Nothing else is legal. Or these, uh, they've only one time in the history of the game said the last two years of cards are playable. Uh, every other featured format has been some other permutation. There, I think there was one where you could only play female characters. Um, so the format shifts pretty wildly depending upon what format is featured. So you're not going to be able to play Carnage if you already have a Carnage. Oh, yeah. Be, Crap. I don't KO the first one. But you could discard that Carnage from your hand to put another plus one counter on the existing Carnage that you have. Spider-Man is a 9-6, right? Spider-Man is a 9-6. you got to get to him, though, because i got a bunch of stuff in the front row blocking him now. Hmm. Yeah, because when I went to Gen Con, I think people were complaining because somebody was playing like a Dorm Elijah. C Stacks was there and everything. Uh, oh, oh, you bet Caleb? Oh, yeah. Yep, and he had He's his cool, good. and he had his cool uh, dice, the counters with the dice. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah he was there and. Uh, People were, uh, somebody had like a Dorma Lize team and people were complaining about it because they got to start the game with like six characters out or something. Yeah, that's the Outriders. Okay. Uh, from like the MCU. Uh, okay. That is, it, you get six characters, they're all 3 2 2, and they all have Ferocious, which is actual first strike that okay. doesn't cost a superpower. So essentially, you get 18. First strike damage on turn one. Yeah, that doesn't seem it's fair at all. Ridiculous! <laughs> it's so insane. It should never have been printed. Oh yeah, Star Wars Destiny had like a Wookiee team like that, but it wasn't that bad. I don't think. Yeah, dude, eighteen first strike damage before the game even starts should never have been allowed. <laughs> I'm so stupid. All right, uh, man, I'm just gonna. Man, I don't have enough moves. I built a crappy deck. All right, but uh, yeah, let me. I will flip these two to give Carnage the two plus ones. Okay. From two to four. So Carnage is now five five, and then I will swing with uh. So Luke Cage is a 4-8, unless he's in combat with Kingpin. Then he'll become an 8-8. Eight, eight. Hmm. Uh, Wasp is a 1-5, Prowler is a 2-1. Okay, um, I'll swing with... 
Carnage on no no Mary Walker on Wasp. All right, Wasp will shrink and cancel the combat. Like in a real game, you would just take it though, right? Uh, I don't. I mean, generally, you want to shrink. Okay. Like why? Why wouldn't I? Like want you to waste your attack. There, there are some times where you have to kind of debate whether you want to use the shrink or not, but yeah. most of the time you do. But Mary Walker sucks. He's only a two four. You would still survive though. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, ha I can only use it on my first, first time she's attacked. Oh, okay, got you, got you, got you. So even if I let it go through, nothing happens. I'm not big enough to hit you. You're not big enough to hit me. Oh, okay. so we end up in the same spot. Okay. I guess I'll go ahead and swing the carnage on uh, Wasp. Sure. So she'll die, and he'll get one more plus one counter for stunning her. Okay. He is a five, right? Yep, and now a six. Okay. Now a six. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, swing kingpin on... Uh, yes, uh, that guy, Prowler? Yeah, Prowler dies. Okay, and with that, that's all I can do. All right, draw my two. I feel like I'm so close to be able to get out of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll play a face-down resource. So... Playing a card face down just means I didn't have a location. Oh, you can do that? Oh, did I not? <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Would that have changed your last turn? I'm sorry, man. That's a huge mistake on my part. Okay. One of the greatest things about Versus is you don't get mana screwed ever. Because you okay. can take any card in your hand and play it face down so that you can still play an on-curve character. Yeah, I missed like, I missed like three land drops. But uh, let me drop one now. Well, I'm sorry. I should have said something sooner. Oh, uh, no. That's my bad. I should, I should have remembered. Uh, Baron. This is another one of those things where if we were playing in person, I would have caught that and been like, oh, here. Yeah, that's why like, I hate uh, not just playing in the physical, but I mean in person, but yeah. All right, so now I got Baron Mordo out. Sure. And then uh, KO a stun supporting character. Oh, man, that would have been good. All right, but yeah, he's a six drop in a eight five, one one health. All right, I'm gonna play Black Cat. She's a three four, and when oh, she comes um, into play, you have to discard a card. Okay, uh, my choice, right? Uh, no, it's random. You have to discard oh. a random card, which yeah. is even worse. <laughs> Luckily, I've got two of the same two cards, so. All right. Uh, and then Black I've card. got, I think this is my last copy of Wasp to try to slow you down. Great. Um, I guess Luke Cage will pick off Mary Walker. Okay. Why not swing in the kingpin? Oh, I probably should have because I forgot about his power. Yeah. Because I was thinking he only had four attack. Yeah, he should swing in the kingpin. All right. Got uh, four wounds now. Yeah, that's way smarter. Good call, man. Oh, yeah. uh, and then I'll team attack into Mary Walker. Mm, two for four. four. Yeah, that'll... Well... Hmm. Four. hmm. So Black Cat's a four on the defense, and Wasp is a five. And together, it's three and one, so they're four attack coming at Mary Walker. So you can strike either character back, but I don't think she's big enough to stun either one. Mm. All right, you know what? I can respond with plot twist, right? Absolutely. And it's not worth it. All right, I'll lose Mary. Fair. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man doesn't have range, so I can't do anything with him while he hides in the back row. And I pass to you. Cool. Right, ready. Draw two. Oh, 
I'll play a drop a location. Puts me at seven. Drop a black heart. Seven drop. Is he the one that gets bigger based on the KO pile? Yeah. So black heart gets plus one, plus one for each evil character in my KO pile. And I've got one, two, three, four. So, put the counters. So it becomes a eight eight. And um, so I've got. Technically, he doesn't actually get plus one counters. He just yeah. has sort of like a cloud effect. Okay. All right. Um. So I can reform my guys now. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. Uh, so if I have range, that means I can hit guys in the back row from the back row. You can sh yeah, you can declare attacks from the back row, and flight allows you to fly over my front row and hit my back row. Yep. Um, except for I gotta knock out Wasp first. Yeah, because she's a flyer, correct. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't make, I mean, it only makes sense to put your range and your flight in the back row, right? No, because sometimes you want to leave somebody to block for your front row guy. Yep. Okay. Uh, the other benefit to attacking with range is if a character who has range attacks a character who doesn't have range, the the non-range defender can't strike back. Okay, sweet. Because I can't, like, reach you. So if you're trying to, like, you declare a four-attack range into my black cat, my three-attack doesn't matter because she doesn't have range, so she can't shoot back. Okay, saying Wasp was out of the way, I could just range into Spidey, and then I'll be all good, right? And I can't hit you back because I don't have range. But you still have that red up, though, which will give you first strike before I even strike you, right? It will give me a first strike, but only against a main character. Oh. The color I have to have to hit supporting characters is green, and I'm not showing any green. Crazy. All right, uh, so... Pretty much the order of the day is to take out Wasp. All right. Um, if you can clear Wasp and fly over and hit Spider-Man, you might have me. Okay. Uh, all right, let's swing Big Ass Carnage into Wasp. I'm going to shrink. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. All right, uh, let's swing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's swing Kingpin into Wasp. You got the five attack? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. five. Then you got it. <laughs> she five dies. <laughs> All right, let's swing um, ranged Baron Mortal into Spidey. What's your attack? Um, eight five into Spidey. Range. Well, I have this plot twist here that gives me plus one and then an additional plus one for each superpower I have. I have two superpowers, so that's a total of th plus three. So I'm going to get up to nine defense. Uh, man, damn it. Um, I'm kind of forgetting stuff. Uh, man, you mind if I uh, play this plot twist on the main? Sure. That's uh, fine. My yeah, bad, yeah, my bad. No worries. I kind of just drew into this one. I forgot. I got to. I, I mean, that'll get you there. That, got, that's all you need. That'll be plus one more, and that'll be enough. <laughs> Got too excited. Uh, but, uh, damn it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is all backwards, but I also got this plot to his pain and suffering, but I would have had to declare it before the attack. Now, no, see, pain and suffering, see how the bold face word is combat on yeah. that card? Yeah. You can play that one during the combat. So, so you could wait until I commit my plot twist to give me an attack or defense buff, and then you can play that plot twist after I pass it back to you to give me minus two defense and you get there anyway. Okay, so even without this crap, I would Yeah, you wouldn't even need that with... one. Okay. That one would get you there because it'll give you minus two. Okay, so combat... Or me so... minus two. Okay, so all so combat me... plot twists are truly instants. Uh, it, they're not instant in the sense that you can't play it whenever you want. You have to have priority and priority passes after every action. 
So even if I have three things that I want to do in a row during a combat, uh, I do one and then I pass to you for a response and you say no response. It comes back to me. I do another one. So in magic, I can say, hey, I'm going to do three things all at once. Sometimes in verses like a high level play, you'll see players do multiple things, but that's just kind of a shorthand. Okay. Technically, the way the order works is you declare the attack and you have a chance to play something. You say, I'm not going to play anything. It comes to me. I say, I'm going to commit secret Avengers to avoid it. Now you have a chance to play something and that's when you commit pain and suffering. And then if I don't, I have a chance to play something else, but if I don't have anything else, I pass, you pass, and then we resolve combat. Okay, cool. So it kind of works like magic. It, the biggest thing about versus is there isn't a stack where multiple effects get fed in and then it's like first in, last out. That whole kind of game mechanic structure from MTG that you throw that out in versus. Cool. Yeah, good game. I like oh, it. What you think, man? Man, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, but that was, uh, man. Not the smoothest game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I we mean, got webcams to deal with and everything, too, so. Yeah, the game went about as smooth as the technical issues leading up to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I think I mostly got it now. Cool. Well, uh, I had hoped to get more than one in tonight, but unfortunately, it took us so long. I think I'm going to have to call it, man. Yeah, it's like, about I hear my time. I hear you. All right. Uh, uh, but good games. We'll have to do this again, and hopefully next time we won't have to fight with the computers so hard before we actually get a play. Oh, yeah. Just go straight to Facebook. Right on. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, cool, man. Well, you have a good night. Been real fun. You have a good one, too. All right, later. Thanks for the teach. Later.